Hey guys, today I'm talking about Tiny Crate, a game I created in the Godot engine and how it started its life as a Pico 8 project right here called Pico Crate. Let's jump right in and play this a little bit. You can go through the portal. Of course, you don't want to get those spikes, so you jump over them, jump through the portal. You can push these boxes around right here. You can also lift these boxes and throw them around. It's a very simple game. Pausing this game for a second and bringing up the Pico 8 browser. I have Celeste open right here. And Celeste is a big inspiration for Tiny Crate to begin with, especially on the programming side. So one of the beautiful parts of Pico 8 is every game in Pico 8 is open source. All you have to do is back out of the game and open the code editor right here. It has all of the code available for you. Of course, this is a very small window and it's hard to read all this, so I'm going to open it up in VS Code full screen right here. Now the entire code for the Celeste Pico 8 project exists right here, all the way down to right here where it begins the graphics and the audio and all that stuff Pico 8 stores. But the first 1,432 lines right here are all code. And I know that's a bit overwhelming, we're only going to focus on the movement code today. So if we go to the move function, you can see here how Lua and GDScript can differ. This is the Lua language that Pico8 uses and you can use Lambda functions like this to declare object.move equals function OXOY. And OX and OY are the speed X and Y values. And what's important here is the remainder value that is also being used. What's very nice about Celeste is the pixel perfect collision that we have going on here. This pixel perfect collision is done based on an integer rounding system. So if the player is going to move three pixels to the right in one frame because it has a speed of three pixels, it's going to check each pixel along the way if the space is available and whether or not it can move there. And also, if you are perhaps moving less than a pixel, if you only have 0.5 speed, it'll take you two frames to reach one pixel because it's the remainder of each frame added together to equal an integer value. Now, learning from this very simple bit of code and expanding upon it, I started to develop this game Pico Crate. I started to experiment with tile-based and entity-based collisions. Here you can see it's colliding against all these white tiles that are drawn on the map, while the boxes are entities with moving hitboxes. Now this is where I really start to add more art to the game, and a little shout out to Kenny NL for helping me develop the art style at the early stages of this game. Now this is my first experiment branching out from Pico 8 with this project. Here I am working in mono game using a vector art style and trying to see how the game works with more smooth and rounded corners and granular movement. Here is a little test I did in Unity and I managed to recreate the collision and physics system where you can push boxes over the edge here and it's gonna lift one up, throw it over. The basic systems are re-implemented. And here you can see the Godot engine port being fleshed out. I started to change the art style a little bit and simplify the palette. I wanted the levels to be more readable as the player. I wanted to express what's important, the box and the portal. I want the background to be very subtle and decorative, and I want all the moving pieces to contrast brightly and be visible at all times. All right, so here I have the Godot Engine project open for Tiny Crate. It is available on GitHub. Go check out the description for a link to that. And we can look at our player script here we see that the player extends the actor class. And if we look at the actor class, we can see a familiar move function, similar to what we were looking at in Celeste. Using the remainder, using rounding, and using the product of those two numbers. Right here it sees very similar formula going on and of course move y and move x two different functions here if we look at one of those we can see that it's crawling pixels so it's going 4i in range of how the distance you're going to move so 4i in 3 for example it's going to check is the first pixel available yes it is i'll move there is the second pixel available yes it is i'll move there 
If the third pixel is not available and it is in fact occupied by a solid entity or tile, then this whole situation happens where it gives it back collision data, whether it hits the floor, this and that, it'll stop the movement and stop all acceleration right there. Now this is just the actor class. Of course we have the player, which inherits from this. We have the box, which also inherits from this. And if we're looking back at Pico 8, we can see the update function here is the meat of the entire project, really. And this little bit of code here is where each object is iterated through and moved and updated in order. Something we don't have to do in Godot Engine thanks to the physics process function, which is present on any node. And looking at the actor class, we can see the move function and the movement code happens in this physics process frame. And the player has their own physics process function with all the gameplay logic going on. And once this function has been called, the parent function is called after that. So the logic for each actor is done and then the movement for each actor is done. And the beauty of Godot Engine is I can make the game widescreen, I can use any audio files I like with any fidelity, allowing me to make my own sound effects and audio outside of the game engine to help express the gameplay a bit more. Now you can play this game on my itch.io page for free right now, like right here, jump through that portal. You can also go ahead and view the code on GitHub and clone the project for yourself. You can explore it right here, the source folder and the actor folder. This is where you're gonna see the actor, the box, and the player scripts. Coming to this autoload folder, you can see all the singletons I used in the project. And looking here at the media folder is where the audio is stored. There is one song in the game. There are quite a few sound effects. And of course, this game is using the fonts created by Daniel Linson. I'll link that in the description as well. And that's Tiny Crate, my Pico 8 game turned into a Godot Engine game that is now open source, available on GitHub. Go check that out. Go play the game online. Feel free to iterate on the game, modify it in any way you like, create your own levels, and feel free to share anything you've made with me on Twitter, at HarmonyHoney. Thanks for watching guys, I'll catch y'all in the next video, take care.